All right, welcome everybody. Thanks for being here live on Team Rhino call for September 6th. So this is our first team call of the month of September. That means we finished up our first month of using the Team Rhino activity tracker for the month of August, which of course is an optional thing, but I'm doing some recognition based stuff out of the um, activity tracking challenge. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. First of all, because I want to recognize people for some of the activity that they're doing, the new contacts they're making and all that kind of stuff, um, which gets you the results and not just for um, results. And I, I, want to also, I want also for people to see the correlation between activity and results to see how that works. And that I, I want you all to think about from – you know, everything that we do, I want you to think about it from the perspective of I'm a new coach or I'm a coach and how does that affect me and how does that affect my business, my activity, my results and all that kind of stuff. But every one of us, if we're building a business with this, is also going to be a leader because you're going to sign other people up to be coaches and you're going to, you're going to have the conversation with them. Now I'll totally help you with your first couple coaches, the conversations, first 10 coaches, if you want about how to talk to them about what's important about this business. But I want you to think about something like the team Rhino activity tracking challenge and think about when you sign up a new coach and you're explaining to them, these are the things that you need to do to be successful as a coach. What are you going to tell them? Right. And if you have something like this activity tracking thing where it shows that the people who make the most new contacts and the people who do the most invites get the most success club points, the most sales, the highest volume, build bigger businesses, then you have something that you can tell them, hey, here's what you do when you start out as a new coach. Pull out this app. There's new contacts. There's invites, invites to coaching, follow-ups, follow-up with, uh, with current challengers, and team call participation. Do those things every day and as many as you can. Like how easy is that? That's like, here's the things that we need to do. So that's what I'm kind of going towards with the whole activity tracking challenge. So I want as many of you veteran coaches and new coaches to do the activity tracking so that you can say, I made it look, look at what happened in August when I made 35 new contacts and invited 10 people to challenges. I made this many success club points. But in September, I did 80 new contacts and I invited 40 people to challenges and look at what happened to my success club points, right? Like, so we can see that correlation. And then when a new coach comes in, we can be like, hey, here's what you need to do, okay? You get this many, you get this many. You do this, you get this. This is, this is what you have to do, okay? So that's what I'm trying to do. So let's all jump in for September. If you didn't jump in in August on the activity tracking challenge, you know, I encourage you to jump in on September and do the activity tracking and see what happens to your uh, success club points and your results, so your volume and all that kind of stuff. So with that, I wanna give um, big shout outs. We have a couple of our top three on the call today. So Becky Bowden. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> awesome job. Becky Bowden uh, was our second place as far as overall activity tracking points. Um, she had nine success club points. Am I remembering that right? Nine success club points. Um, she had a whole ton of volume, a big volume uh, that uh, added to those points. And uh, she did a lot of tracking. Lots. It took me a while to add up all of her stuff. And then um, our other, our third place finisher was Heidi Bortz, who's also on the call. Congratulations, Heidi, for uh, you know coming in third with that tracking, not far behind uh, this boat in there. So uh, I think eight success club points, right, Heidi? Eight success club points. And and re remind me, Heidi, you had how many? like a couple of days before that oh no i i woke up on the first of september with two two from august and all six of those were transferred like people transferring to me oh yeah so you were you were right down to the wire with only a couple of yeah, yeah. exactly okay so um let's talk to uh let's talk to becky first um becky just give us like um what do you think 
was probably, did anything change, I guess is what I want to know. Did anything change by doing the activity tracker this month? Did anything change in your behavior as far as coaching? Did it help you in any way change? Like I used to do this and now I do this because I was trying to do the activity tracker and that helped me or, you know, just give us the rundown on that kind of stuff. Well, my personality is such that I am very goals and prize motivated. <laughs> And I need that accountability. Like if, if no one's, um, if I have nobody to answer to, then I'm not going to do it. And so it kind of was that for me. Like I knew I, I need to be better at it, but it is a good, like, you know, the things that you're supposed to do, but I don't know, for some reason I needed that you know, I'm a checklist person, I'm a sticky notes person. And so that kind of translated to that for me, like, I can check it off on the tracker. And I know it goes towards something. So that was really motivating for me. Awesome. Okay, cool. Oh, on my mind, man. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. So, so negative two this month. Oh, you started at negative two, and you made it to nine. Yes. So, you really, so you really made 11 points yeah. a month. You just had some taken back from somebody returned something or something like that. Yep. Okay. yep. All right. Cool. Um, Heidi, thoughts on the tracker? Uh, how, how did it how help, did help you? you? Okay. So what I was saying to you earlier is I feel like it gives you a sense of accomplishment. Whether or not you actually make a sale at the end of the day, you can put these points in there and you can say, yeah, I did that. And yeah, I did that. And yeah, I did that. And it's like, okay, yes, I did something for my business today. Yay mm -hmm. me. Yeah. That's really a good point. Cause you know, I mean, if not a lot of times conversations and things are going on, but you feel like you're, you're not doing anything because there's no points, there's no success club points or there's no sales happening or whatever. You just feel like you're, you know, you're doing all this activity and you're not getting anywhere, but the tracker helps you like actually check something off as these are the, I know these are the things. I mean, we, the things that are on there are on there because we know that those are the things that produce results, right? That we know that you have to make new contacts and you have to invite people to challenges and you have to invite people to become coaches and you have to follow up with people. Like, they're very simple things that there's no question about them. There's not really any debate about it, right? It, it is the things that get you results in your business. And so you can check off. I did the things today that are going to get me results in my business. Now they didn't get me results today, but I did the things that will get me results. And then, you know, maybe you don't see them until August 31st, <laughs> but you see your results, right? Anything else? Other thoughts? No. I mean, except that I started listening to team calls again, like national wake up calls and stuff. I wasn't doing that. And I was like, well, I can get a point if I go listen to one. <laughs> That's good. And then you, then you, now you didn't just like put it on in the background and not listen to any of it. Right. Just so you could get your point. Like maybe you actually got some personal development out of it. You know what I did? I got my pool noodle and I went in the pool and I aqua jogged because I can't really run right now. So I aqua jogged while I listened to it. And awesome. Let me, yeah. Let me tell you, I was pretty focused on what they were saying. Cool. Aqua jogging is really boring. Because your other thing was to focus on aqua jogging, which is not fun at all. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else thoughts on, on activity tracker you'd like, to, there's going to be other coaches that are going to watch this, you know, um, to get their points, <laughs> um, in the, you know, the recording in the next couple of days. So if anybody ha on here has been tracking and they have anything to say about the tracking that you think would help another coach, uh, feel free to pipe up. You can unmute yourself. Oh, Norma's asking, what is the national call-in number, please? Oh, um, I will get that to you. It's in, well, I'll get it to you, Norma. I'll make sure you have that. Uh, anybody else thoughts on the tracker? I think the tracker's pretty good. It's going to take me a little bit to get used to um, getting everything recorded properly and keeping track of the things that I'm doing because I'm kind of, I don't do like a focused power hour 
I yeah. kind of dabble throughout my real job work day when mm -hmm. I get a moment here or there. So it, it's a little bit trickier for me to do the effort and then, oh my gosh, I need to record that so that I can put it in. Yeah. In so there's some adjustment there for, for me to get a handle on it. Yeah, I think it's, I think there's definitely adjustment in behavior. Like, you know, if you're, and, and if you're not doing it as a power hour where you're like, oh, I made a new contact, put it in the thing. Oh, I made a new, con then it's like, how many contacts did I make today? Did I make any? Well, I had that conversation, but I was already talking to that person. So is that a contact? I, I know there's some ambiguity here about what's a contact and what's a follow up and what's a, you know, how many can I do a day? Can I follow up with the same person five times today and call that five follow ups or, you know, I'm not real, real worried about that. I think if you feel like it was a follow up that you can count today, I think we're all adults and, you know, you're your conscience, let your conscience be your guide. You know, if you feel like I made a follow up today, count it. If you feel like I made a new contact today, the only thing I say about contacts is following someone else and not following you back and having actual contact between two people is not a contact. You can't go follow 50 people on Instagram today and call those 50 new contacts. Okay. Cause you have not actually had an interaction, a two way interaction with that person. That's not a new contact. Okay. And even them following you back is not a new contact. I think there needs to be interaction with a person for you to call it a contact. It doesn't have to be a long conversation or anything like that. It just has to be some form of interaction. So I think that's the only kind of qualifier that I say there. Um, all right. Well, that's good with the, with the tracking. Congratulations to Sharina and Becky and, and Heidi for uh, the top tracking. If you've got downline coaches who uh, are not using the tracker right now, I recommend that you start pushing that culture with them and saying, hey, you know, try this out for a month. Just say, just do it for one month, every day as best you can, put in your numbers and see what happens. And I think they're gonna start seeing results and they're gonna be like, oh, okay, this is what I need to do. And you're gonna start seeing the, the production. Interesting fact that I didn't put on the statistics that I put in the post, that was like how many people made success club who also tracked was like almost everyone. The only person that didn't track and made success club was Mr. David Coggin, who tells me that he did track, but he didn't track in the tracker. So he was doing all the same activity. He just didn't put it into our tracking system. <laughs> he expected me to know that he was tracking, I guess, and know his number. <laughs> he said, he said he would send me the spreadsheet. <laughs> But but the other thing that I didn't put on there was um, oh now I just totally forgot what I was going to say wow wow maybe that'll come back to me let's go move on to um, how to overcome objections we've had team calls on this before and I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this but I know that we have new coaches on and we have new coaches on the team and some of them will be listening to this and I think it's also a really good reminder for all of us who have probably heard this from me like I don't know 15 or 20 times <laughs> but overcoming objections is one of the key pieces of being a good team beach body coach because you're going to get objections I get objections all the time the top objections time and money are the top two objections probably, right? You get, I'm too busy for it, or I can't afford it, right? Now, here's the key. I, I, I could probably walk away from how to overcome objections with one overarching key, and I think the key is that you have to be on the same side solving a problem with someone when they have an objection. If you think about it as like two people that are on opposite sides of a table, like arm wrestling, when someone comes up with an objection, it's like you want to switch sides of the table, be on the same side of the table with them, trying to figure out that problem. Like you are partners together to figure out the problem that they've brought up. So they say, I can't afford it. Or they say, I don't have the time. Most people respond with a contradictory 
sentence, some, some type of contradictory statement. So they say, oh, no, it's not too expensive. Here's why. But Shakeology is too expensive. Man, $130 for a bag of shakes, that's too expensive. I can't afford that. The response from people is almost always, unless you know this trick, is almost always, no, it's not too expensive. You spend $4 a day at Starbucks, don't you? It's the same. You'll get way more nutrition out of this, but you, you can just give up your Starbucks or something like that. What you have done when you put, when you do that, when you counter their statement is you've put yourself at odds with the person. And now it's like they feel like they have to defend themselves and defend their statement. So how many of you, by show of hands, when you make a statement and someone else makes the following statement, the follow-up statement to that from someone else that you just said that statement to, says basically, no, what you just said is wrong. How many of you like that? Zero people like that. Wow. <laughs> oh, no, Brooks likes it. Brooks likes it when people tell him that he's wrong. <laughs> Zero people like it when you say, no, you're wrong. What you just said was wrong. I mean, you just don't like it. And you will dig your heels in even if the reasons that they give you for why you're wrong are actually correct. Even if you can kind of see it, you'll kind of dig your heels in, right? Like most people will. unless. The only exception I think to that is if the person who says, no, you're wrong, is someone who is super, super highly trusted in your inner, inner circle, you might take a step back and say, oh, I'm wrong about that? Oh, tell me more. Like if it's like someone who's really, really in your trust circle. Trust, trust me, I'm a doctor, Brooke says. <laughs> 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 Perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kent looks over like, no, no, you're not. <laughs> no, but seriously, like you, if you have someone who you really, really trust, who says something contradictory to you, says, no, you're wrong. You might say, oh, let me listen to this person. But most of the time you dig your heels in, right? So you have to find a way to show the person or to let the person, I like to think of it as letting the other person figure out that they're wrong instead of telling them that they're wrong. You have to help them find a solution to their objection rather than telling them that their objection is invalid. So the first thing that if you're taking notes, the first thing that I always do, maybe you've already written down, be on the same side as them or you know, help them find a solution to their issue. But the first thing I always do is I validate their objection. You have to let them know that their objection is a valid objection, okay? And most of the time, and now I'm not saying to validate their objection if it's really a completely wrong objection, but most of the time, their objections are real objections. It's not that they're like just an idiot or something like that. It's just because they act, that's how they actually feel about it. And a lot of times with price and with time, you felt that way too when you first came across Shakeology or you came across the Beachbody business opportunity. You felt you were too busy. You felt that it was too expensive. You have since changed your mind on those things, at least hopefully. Yes, honey, we're going to have dinner. I, I'm on a call. No, you cannot. <laughs> You tell your kids you're on a call, don't come in, and they come in and go like this. <laughs> That's from bad cooking. <laughs> I need I need food. I was like, we're having oh. we're having dinner. She goes, Well, can I have a snack then? Okay. So what was I saying? <sighs> you were saying Serenity now. We had the same objection when we were new. Oh, yeah. Okay. When you were new, you all had the same objection. So when you're talking to someone and they say, Shakeology is too expensive, you validate the objection by being like, I totally understand where you're coming from on that. Simple. Very simple like that. You don't have to be elaborate. Just, I can totally get where you're coming from. And if you felt the same way, tell them 
that you felt the same way. You're saying your objection is a valid objection. Your reason for possibly not wanting to do this is a valid reason for possibly not wanting to do this. Now, the next step is, let me tell you what I found. You can do this several ways. You can just go right into it. You can be like, oh man, I totally understand where you're coming from on that, on that price thing. When my coach first showed me Shakeology, I thought it was too expensive too. And then go right into, now after he finally convinced me to give it a try for 30 days, what I found was, it did this for me, it saved me on this. You know, Tell your story of why you're drinking Shakeology now when you originally said it's too expensive. Just tell that story. The other thing is, is that you could stop after I totally understand and ask permission to tell that story. And I think that can be very powerful with people. If you say, I mean, it's not required, but you can say, oh, I totally understand where you're coming from. I felt the same way when someone showed me Shakeology, but do you mind if I tell you how that whole story happened? Ask them permission. A lot of people are gonna, most people are gonna be like, oh yeah, sure, tell me. Tell me what happened. You know, now you have that person's permission to tell your story rather than just going right into it. Either way works. Usually going right into it is fine, but those are just options, right? Sometimes that asking permission is really powerful. It builds more trust with that person. <laughs> it's in the background. The kids are loving it. <laughs> the greatest thing about this business, you can do it with your kids around even. So, um, so that's, those are some of the biggest things is validate objections first. If you have a story that goes along with that validation, like I felt that way too. Now I don't feel this way. Here's why. Then tell that story. If you don't, you probably know someone who's doing this, who does have that story. One of my friends in this business always says that the person who wins is the one who collects the most stories. And I like that, that saying because what, what he does is he listens to people in the business who talk about how they do the business and he hears their story. So, so this guy got into the business when he was in construction working 16 hours a day and he had to sell um, stuff on Craigslist to buy his first challenge pack. You know? And now he's making $600,000 a year, has a cabin, you know, has his house paid off and blah, blah, blah. He's got that story and he bottles that story up and puts it in his pocket. And if someone comes along who's working 16 hours a day as a, as a construction person and says, I don't have the time for it. He goes, you know, my friend felt that way until he gave it a try and here's what happened to him, right? He's got that story, right? And I have Heidi's story and I have Brooke's story and I have Becky's story and I have, I have the story of how I met Norma and I have the story of, you know, all these different people, right? I've got all these stories. And when I talk to people and they give me an objection, I go, you know, I felt that way too until, or, you know, that's a valid objection. I totally get where you're coming from. Let me tell you a story though. Is that okay? And then I tell them a story. And that is probably the best way to overcome objections that I've ever come across is to validate what they're saying and then tell them a story, right? Because you're now you're you're not contradicting them or fighting them or debating them. You're like, let's find a solution to this. Let me tell you about someone who solved that problem. Let me tell you about someone who thought that about that that way and now they think about it a different way. And you're just showing them a different way to think about it, but not in a contradictory way. The only other thing I want to say about overcoming objections, because there is mo somewhat more to it, is that there is a document in the training section of the back office that is called, see if you can see that, how to overcome objections. <laughs> and it is in your coach online office under the training section, go to the training library, and it's one of the documents that's listed there, how to overcome objections. Uh, Tommy Migrant helped write this, and he and Mike Ryan used to do a How to Come Overcome Objections Summit speech. I think they did it either two or three years in a row that was like the most highly attended speech of those summits. Like everybody wanted to go to that because those guys were amazing with it. And um, they, it's, there's some really good stuff in here. Just He talks about the feel felt found is what they call it in here, which is kind of what we just talked about. I know how you feel. 
I felt the same way. Here's what I found. That's what feel felt found is, is about. Um, the, he also talks about, I don't know. I don't know about that. All I know is, you know, somebody might say, oh, well, I heard that whey protein does this or that. Well, I don't know about that, but here's what I do know about Shakeology, right? You know, things like that. He talks about um, general product, you know, like clarifying messages, how to use clarifying messages to overcome objections. So one of those, like an example of that is someone says, I've tried some of those uh, meal replacement drinks and they taste awful. And then he gives like a sample response for that. So, so what is it? What, what is this beach body thing that you're doing? If someone asks you that, what's your sample response? He asks a clarifying question. Well, where should I begin? What do you already know about it? Things like that. So this, how to overcome objections is something that would be like a homework. Maybe write that down on your notes, go take a look at that document and see if there's some other things that you can glean from that besides what we've talked about tonight. Um, now thoughts on overcoming objections from anybody here live, live on the team Rhino call. We've got one person on the phone. I don't know who that is. That's Kate Jackson. Oh, cool. Hi, Kate. Uh, I just have one thought on the overcoming objections, and that is it takes practice. Mm, yeah. Lots and lots and lots and lots of practice and lots and lots and lots of conversations before it starts to become second nature. And even then, I don't even feel like it's second nature to get to And I get lots of objections, just like everybody else. It's not, if you're getting objections, it means you're asking good questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, everybody's going to continue to get objections. You're not going to you're not going to just like get rid of objections. I think that if you do a really good job of listening to the person when they're first talking and asking good questions and listening to what they actually want and helping them find a solution for what they want, you'll get less objections. But you're not going to be able to eliminate <laughs> objections. You're still going to get some of those. So, and practice for sure, definitely practice. Becky? The only thing I would add to that is just from over time, something that I've learned is that a lot of the people that I've had objections from will usually go do something else that's cheaper or easier, but I've had a lot of those people come back later. Yeah. So if you leave, you leave them with, um, something that you feel good about and you're you haven't been pushy and you've kept the relationship going we've talked about that before too you just continue to check in and be friends and mm -hmm. that kind of thing um i've had a lot of those people come back yep you just have to be patient with those people too yep continuing to just build a relationship with the person uh, an objection now a no now doesn't mean necessarily a no forever it just means not right now and you continue to have a relationship with that person and ask them about other things that are going on in their life and just be a friend and listen. And then later they may be ready to do it or maybe not, you know, absolutely. I think <clears throat> Ryan, it's Norma. Hey. Um, even though I'm just starting, I know that with just so many of the other products that I've tried and I, I feel for a uh, clarity and validation is, Give it a try, and if it doesn't work for you, you get a 30-day money-back mm -hmm. guarantee. Yep. Is that something that would work for you? And I know many people have tried that, and they realize they really are happy with the product. Yep. Are you ready to go ahead? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that does work, too. That The whole 30-day money-back guarantee is a great objection overcomer. In fact, I think he talks about that in uh, – some of this, how to overcome objections is how to use the 30 day. Um, yeah, he's one of his objection examples is I just can't afford it. And he says, what made me give it a try was the 30 day money back guarantee. I knew that if I didn't like it, I would get my money back after 30 days. I felt so much better. I knew it was worth every penny. Does the money back guarantee change anything for you? Is what he asks as a clarifying, you know, like, and I'm sure that nobody is going to say, no, it doesn't make any difference. Right. Say, right. Absolutely. It makes every difference. Yeah. 
A lot of people are going to say, yes, that makes a difference. Anything else on uh, overcoming objections We're at about an hour here? Um, I just wanted to maybe go over real quick some thoughts we're having on our next challenge. Um, so we talked today, I know a lot of you are in the message string on the power of the pack challenge. We have the power of the pack that's been going on for a month now and it's got another, well, I guess it's got another three and a half weeks or so um, through the rest of September. And we want to do another $1,000 power of the pack challenge. And we thought about also running a concurrent, is that the right word? Concurrent. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, concurrent uh, biggest loser challenge. The idea here would be that the power of the pack challenge requires that you purchase a challenge pack like it has in the past. You have to have Shakeology and a workout program, and that has to be what you're using to get your results in the power of the pack challenge. The coaches put in $50 a piece to make up the $1,000 pool, and the winner gets 70%, right? Or does the winner take it all in, in Power of the Pack? Do we decide 70, 20, 10? Pretty sure it's 70, 20, 10. 70, 20, 10, top three, right? Okay, I think the $500 one, it was winner take all. Yeah. But now we're doing 70, 20, 10 in the thousand dollar one. And, uh, and, but that's all made up by the coaches, right? And you have to do beach body. It's all beach body, beach body, beach body, right? Um, the biggest loser challenge would be one where the pot would be made by the participants. They would buy in $50 to get into the challenge. And then they would be allowed to use any program that they want, any workout system that they want, whatever they want to do. My battery is just about to die on my computer too. So um, they, they'll be able to do whatever they want in the challenge. Okay. And this will give you kind of options for people. Um, some people we have found in the biggest losers end up doing beach body stuff anyway, right? That's that's what they end up using. But this would allow you to actually, if people join the power of the pack, they could also join the biggest loser and win even more money if they wanted to put in another fifty dollars. Or you as a coach could give some kind of incentive for the people who join the power of the pack challenge that you'll cover half of their $50 to get into the biggest loser if you want or something. But those are some ideas that we're thinking about to try to make September big. And uh, so any thoughts on that before we close up? Cause my computer's going to die here in a second and I don't want to go get the cord. So. <laughs> Cause we're almost done anyway, but uh, any thoughts on that? Are you doing that September or October? Uh, where we're going to do that from October 10th through November 20th. So it would okay. be six just that September. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we're going to probably do most of the, most of your sales for that are going to happen in September. Okay. Right? Makes sense. In October. Um, but we'll do October 10th through November 20th because that'll be six weeks and finish before Thanksgiving. Nice. So it's kind of like on the healthy wage out in New yeah. York. Yeah. <clears throat> exactly. Exactly. So any other thoughts on that? I'll put lots of stuff in the team page about it and we'll get it all set up. No other thoughts? Any other thoughts in general before we finish up? Going once, going twice. Thank you all for being on live again. Congrats to uh, Becky and Heidi and Sharina. When you watch this, <laughs> talk to y'all later.